I believe that frontline journalism is important. You know, without these photos and videos and firsthand experience, we can't really tell the world how bad it might be. There does seem to be a strong sense that they won't give up the fight and that there are, are in this city of a million people a force of young fighting men. Although unorganized, there's plenty of will to fight and to hold out here. There was a group of young teenagers around a car and they said, Qaddafi forces are 300 meters away. I didn't want to be the guy that said, let's turn around. I didn't want to do that. There's always that allure for some people of, of combat. There's always that, um, there's always that, that sort of high of being close to combat and then being able to come back and tell that story. I'm Penny Sukhar Hamel, wife of the late Anton Hamel, photojournalist who was shot dead in Libya on 5th April 2011. I met Jim through this tragic circumstance. He was with Anton in Libya during the time reporting on the crisis that was unfolding. Jim was so moved by what had happened and so moved by the circumstance of Anton behind three young children that he decided to do something about it. And so he was the driving force for a fundraiser that helped secure the children's future. And I said, Jimmy, why? Why would you want to do this? And um, he said, Dad, I, I, I've found my my passion. I found what I really want to do. I want to, I want to tell the story of people fighting for their lives to make their world better. He had the same idea of bearing witness that you're in this corner of the world where there's terrible human suffering, you know, there's a government that wants to hide it from the world, but you're going to bring it to light. You're going to show it through words and images. And I really admired his passion and completely understand why, you know, he did what he did. And before he went back out again, did you, did you try and talk him out of it, Michael? No, absolutely not. I know him too well. I know him too well. Um, we joked about uh, burning his passport, <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he just would have had another one. It was, it's really his calling, and uh, I think he was quite good at it. You know, it's, it's our job. You know, I've, I've been covering um, conflicts since Iraq in 2008, you know, and I, I really... Uh, I'm drawn to the drama of the conflict, you know, and, and trying to, you know, expose the untold stories. But, you know, I'm drawn to the human rights side. You know, there's, there's a certain sense of trying to find out who these people really are. You know, he was very, very bothered and very disturbed by the haphazard, you know, bombing of civilians, or, you know, also getting caught in, in the crossfire between the two sides. And um, he wanted to tell that story as objectively as possible. It was, I mean, it's very difficult. It was very emotional. And yet he always, stood there and, you know, and, and managed to, to get the, the images that he felt told the story the best. I really put my hand on my heart and say that James Foley was one of the kindest people I've, I've ever met. Um, a, a deeply compassionate, principled man, uh, a man of great courage, I, and an incredibly generous man. And he was uh, wonderful to work alongside. He was also immensely brave. If I had to choose only one word to define Jim, I will not hesitate at commitment. Jim is committed to the people, 
the stories committed to his way of life and Jim believes in what he does and believes in helping others will do in it far away from the media spotlight. I lost not, not only uh, uh, a good colleague but also a close friend. Uh, James Foley was probably my, my best cellmate during uh, our months of uh, captivity together. James was just great. He was always supporting everyone, always, uh, always there to help and to share. Jim was doing exactly what he loved and you know he was incredibly brave right to the very end. He showed no fear. Um, it's amazing. Jim stood for for love and hope. I mean he went to Syria in hopes of bearing witness to all the suffering there so that people of the world might first become aware and then do something to alleviate that suffering.